Welcome to One Teacher, One Scientist chat room. Today we have a very special guest with us, Ms. Dalita Naidu, Principal of Meridian School, Hyderabad. Ms. Naidu, with a three-decade experience in education, heading institutions, being on so many educational boards, and then also being the regional head for Aga Khan Education Services, Ma'am, you're a storehouse of experiences. So, you know, your core beliefs in education of purpose, passion, and pedagogy, they really caught my eye. And I would like to understand what according to you should be the purpose of education. You know, your perspective on what should be the aim of education. of education unlike you know the belief which most educationists have uh, that you know education means good grades good marks this is a given you know but it is not the the be all and end all education is molding the personality of the child wherein you know, the, the child begins to look at the world with a positive eyes. Education has therefore got to be very holistic. There are several times parents who come to me and tell me, ma'am, he is simply not studying, ma'am. And he is not interested, he just doesn't sit with his books. I tell them, you know, see, your child is not good at this he has these definitely better skills but the children who are probably not so great at their academics for give brilliant performances their dance moves are simply out of the world now when an educational institution does not recognize this but feels that okay it is only academic performance that counts you know there, you know, lies the whole uh, uh, dichotomy of, you know, the purpose of education. The purpose of education, every individual, every single teacher, every single school head, every single person associated with school should remember only one thing, that we are here for children. Yes. We are here for children. We are not here in this field for anything. So I just wanted to also ask you, do you think it is very essential to uh, preserve that magic and wonder in children when they are growing up? Unstructured play can actually help in preserving that magic and wonder in children? Yes, I'll, I'll take, give you an example. I have a little grandchild. You know, just a natural way. Yes, come, let's do this. You know, that wonderment in their eyes is, you know, something that uh, is worth a million dollars, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, uh, and I think that magic and wonder gets lost when children get into a structured environment all the time. And perhaps yes. children need that experiential learning. And this is what is experiential learning. You ask them, you ask them to go to the sand pit and mess up, they love it. They love it and believe me, they will learn so many things. You know the, the measurement part. You know they have different, uh, you know the beach equipments, different things lying there. They will learn that yes, this particular container is bigger than this container because it gets in, there is more sand that is filling into this and nobody needs to tell that you. They will learn on their own. They so, will learn how to sing, how to move, how to dance, how to, you know, give the right sway for the music is something that, you know, we will not teach them. That's a natural instinct for every child. Into Basically, I think you some know, of these natural instincts get lost in a very structured uh, question answers, fill in the blanks thing. And, Maybe it is we need a pedagogical shift, ma'am, in the way we are teaching 
primary and pre-primary? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the, the more structured we make it, you know, children, then their own creativity doesn't come. See, they have a lot of creative potential in them. When you give them a you give them a simple drawing, you see the mess that they make, but you know the, the mess is very beautiful. They have everything. And believe me, the children, you know, they make a drawing, you know, which looks for us maybe weird. But you ask the child, what did you make? The child will have a weird face like thing. And she says that's her mother. Yeah. Then you know, she has constructed a meaning for what she has done. Absolutely. Isn't it? We, yeah. we may think that's a weird thing. But on the child's mind, that is there is a meaning that has already been constructed. Getting them to relate to the real world is very important. Nothing can be, you know, uh, you, you, and that's something, you know, which I always feel that if you have, you know, at the primary level, uh, you should have as less screen time as possible. Unfortunately, now with COVID-19, it's not possible. But then otherwise, otherwise, you know, we should give them as much as possible experiential. The more they learn in an experiential manner, you know, you won't believe the children, you know, you don't have to teach them that, you know, light objects float and heavy objects sink. That is lifelong learning. Technology cannot give them the experience that the real world can give them. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, that's, that's so nice talking to you, ma'am, and getting a perspective on uh, my patient. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. <laughs>